Four days post the static fire involving 33 Raptor engines under Booster 10, SpaceX recently returned the first stage of the upcoming flight test to the production site. This marks the second significant test for Flight 3 Starship, and it's anticipated to be the conclusive assessment for Booster 10 following an earlier six-engine static fire trial for the second stage. These tests are essential for SpaceX to validate the engine's integrity and the rocket booster's overall readiness for the imminent flight test. During the Super Heavy Booster 10 static fire, the substantial mist clouds witnessed were a result of the water deluge system in action. Once the Raptor engines ignited, the orbital launch mount's deluge system released a significant volume of water toward the Starship engine bay, or the aft as it's called. The intensely high temperatures from the 33 Raptor engines convert the water into steam and mist. Furthermore, the force from the mammoth 16.5 million pounds of thrust disperses the water across a wide radius around the orbital launch mount. This process is a protective measure guarding the OLM against potential damage akin to what occurred post the Starship Flight 1. Starbase engineers removed Booster 10 from the orbital launch mount a day following the 33 engine static fire test. After the holiday break, an SPMT, or self-propelled modular transporter, equipped with eight counterweights, made its way to the launch site and ferried our illustrious booster back to the production site. I'm eager to recount this incredible moment of Booster 10's journey. Just imagine, despite the multitude of cameras and radars assisting, the driver skillfully maneuvering this unimaginably colossal creation, deftly navigating right angle turns. Once back at home, Booster 10 was carefully relocated into the Mega Bay, marking the next stage of its journey. SpaceX's decision decision to move Booster 10 might be attributed to two primary reasons, either for enhancements or due to uncertainties regarding the Flight 3 schedule. For starters, the relocation sets the stage for Booster 10's final flight preparation. It allows SpaceX to potentially address any issues with malfunctioning Raptors, providing an opportunity for replacement if necessary. Additionally, the departure of B-10 offers the SpaceX team a chance to review and upgrade the launch pad following the last static fire test. Shortly after B-10's departure from the launch site, a new liquid oxygen pump was delivered. Considering all possible OLS or orbital launch site pump locations were filled a few days ago, it seems likely that this is a replacement. The second reason behind the B-10 relocation might be related to its launch schedule, indicating the possibility of adjustments or uncertainties regarding the intended launch date. While SpaceX is aiming to conduct the Flight 3 test of its Starship system soon, the exact timing remains uncertain. The company is awaiting a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA for short, which is currently overseeing an investigation into Flight 2. The FAA is unlikely to grant a license for Flight 3 until this investigation concludes and any necessary corrective actions are implemented by SpaceX should they be required. The second launch of the Starship Flight 2 faced several delays due to the lack of environmental compliance approval from the FAA. The timing of this approval may occur either earlier or later than expected, potentially leading to unexpected extensions of the flight date, depending on the unfolding situation. For Flight 3, SpaceX is aiming to rectify previous issues in hopes of successfully sending Starship SN-28 on a trajectory halfway around Earth, ultimately performing a controlled landing in the ocean off the coast of Hawaii, specifically the island of Kauai. Following this milestone, SpaceX has ambitious plans for its Starship and Super Heavy rocket. The company has already secured multiple paying customers for future Starship missions. Indeed, a recently discovered NASA file revealed that NASA researchers have proposed employing SpaceX's Starship and Falcon Heavy for a crewed near-Earth asteroid exploration mission. This proposal was presented during the 8th IAA Planetary Defense Conference held in Vienna, Austria a couple of months ago. The proposal team is comprised of distinguished individuals from various fields, including Lindley Johnson, Johnson, NASA's inaugural planetary defense officer, renowned for his prior role as the Near-Earth Object Program's executive in the Planetary Sciences Division, Rob Landis, currently serving as a program executive in NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, or PDCO, Paul Abel, the esteemed chief scientist for small body exploration in the Astro Materials Research and Exploration Science Division at the Johnson Space Center, among others. Their collective expertise contributed to their presentation on 
prospects for future human spaceflight missions to near-Earth asteroids, outlining a groundbreaking plan for asteroid exploration. The proposal unveiled a mission concept that showcased the use of SpaceX's Starship and Falcon Heavy for a crewed exploration mission to the near-Earth asteroid, or NEA, known as 2001FR85. In this concept, astronauts would be launched aboard a Dragon capsule using SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, eventually docking with a Starship in orbit. The technical intricacies were detailed, encompassing various factors such as crew size, mission duration, cargo, and propellant, as depicted in the presentation images provided. According to the NASA researchers, the mission concept involves departure from and return to a high Earth orbit, or HEO, to minimize energy consumption during travel. The mission's estimated duration spans approximately 152 days, encompassing crew loiter time in HEO before and after the primary mission. The proposed plan intends to transport a crew of three via a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, effectively functioning as a taxi to transport them to the Starship positioned in orbit. Subsequently, the Starship would ferry the crew to the targeted NEA. Functioning as the primary spacecraft for the mission, the Starship would be equipped to carry necessary equipment and survival supplies. Its propulsion system, utilizing liquid oxygen and methane, would facilitate spacecraft navigation, serving both as the main propulsion and for precise control. Currently under development, the Starship is envisioned to become the world's most powerful and versatile spacecraft capable of executing complex missions. Upon arrival at the NEA, the crew would spend 16 days conducting teleoperated operations and extravehicular activities, or EVAs. The proposal suggests that the crew would transfer from the Starship back to Dragon for the return journey to Earth. This return would involve a parachute-assisted ocean landing, a method currently considered the safest for astronauts until Starship is operational and certified for human landing. The cargo carried would include equipment necessary for operations, spare components, and samples collected from the NEA. The researchers highlighted that this mission would serve as a crucial test for more ambitious endeavors, such as missions to Mars or other near-Earth asteroids. This proposal offers an exciting opportunity to utilize SpaceX's Starship for exploration and study of near-Earth asteroids, opening doors for deeper human ventures into space. In related news, India initiated its year with the launch of an astronomy satellite, marking the beginning of a year that includes critical tests for its human spaceflight program and the potential for a joint crewed mission with NASA. The Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle took off at 10.40 p.m. Eastern on December 31st, or 9.10 a.m. local time on January 1st from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. Around 22 minutes later, it successfully placed its primary payload, the ExpoSat spacecraft, into a 650-kilometer orbit. The ExpoSat satellite, weighing 469 kilograms, is equipped with two instruments designed for X-ray polar imagery measurements. Astronomers plan to leverage the collected data to conduct in-depth studies of neutron stars, black holes, and supernovae. Upon the deployment of ExpoSat, the PSLV's fourth stage maneuvered to a 350-kilometer orbit. This stage carries the PSLV Orbital Experimental Module 3, which accommodates 10 experiments contributed by ISRO, universities, and companies. These experiments, including fuel cells and thrusters, are anticipated to operate for about a month. The launch marked the beginning of 2024 in universal time, following a record-breaking 2023 that witnessed approximately 220 orbital launch attempts globally. India, contributing seven successful launches, utilized vehicles like the PSLV, GSLV, and Small Satellite Launch Vehicle, or SSLV, I guess. The ISRO anticipates nearly doubling its launch rate in 2024, planning 12 to 14 launches throughout the year. A focal point for ISRO in 2024 revolves around a sequence of test flights as part of its Gaganyan Human Spaceflight Program. In October, the agency initiated the first test by launching an uncrewed capsule on a suborbital flight to evaluate its launch aboard system. 2024 will be the year of Gaganyan, mentioned Samanat, following the launch outlining plans for additional abort tests and two more test vehicle flights this year, followed by an unmanned mission. This indicates an orbital test of the Gaganyan spacecraft without a crew aboard. Consequently, the first crewed Gaganyan flight might not occur until 2025, contrary to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's initial goal of a 2022 launch to commemorate India's 75th independence anniversary. However, the next Indian astronaut 
astronaut bound for space might travel aboard an American spacecraft. In a summit meeting between Modi and President Joe Biden in June of 2023, both nations revealed intentions to create a strategic framework for human spaceflight cooperation by year's end. This framework includes plans for training Indian astronauts at NASA's Johnson Space Center and a joint effort to launch a mission to the International Space Station in 2024 as articulated in a joint statement. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up and become a patron today to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.